Hey guys, so today we are going to have a look at the active component. The reason for this, it's in my opinion the easiest one and this is my first tutorial for version 4.0 or the new core framework. So I thought let's start with it. We have two examples here for the active component and I'm sure you are already familiar with the active component from the earlier versions. There are some changes in there I want to show you. Um, These examples are really pretty simple here. So we just have a button and if we press it, this wheel here starts rotating and the light bulb turns on and off. And you can see there's a nice little transition in the intensity and the movement. So it's not on and off instantly, but we have a nice transition. First of all, let's have a quick look on how these examples are made and this would also be a tip to really go in there and see how we have set up these examples. It could give you some inspiration on how to use these components, but of course there are a million different ways on how to use them. So for the example of this wheel here, let's open it up. And as you can see, we do this in this example in the tick. We just set the um, at a local rotation, depending on if the active component is actual active or not. If it is active, we use this float here. And if not, we use this float and we do a little interpretation. So it will not stop instantly, but you have a smooth interpolation between those two values if this here will change. So very simple example, um, the light is, is kind of the same. It talks with the, um, also talks with the active component and changes the light intensity. I would say, let's do a quick example here and we will also have a look at the drag component a little bit, just to, to recap on how you, you connect both of them, but we will have a separate tutorial about the drag component later on. So let's dive in and create a new blueprint here. And I, of course, call it uh, explosion. BP explosion. Haven't done a lot of explosions lately. So let's use this to make some explosions going on. The first thing we are going to add is, of course, the component active. Let's hit compile. And we don't need any of those here. We can just delete them. The only thing we really need is the event here, active state changed. And there we have two different types. The source info is, is now new in this, in this version. You will have it in every component or we try to integrate it in every component. It will give you more information about where where this is actually coming from. So you exactly know, okay, this pawn has pressed it. And if we have a look at it, open this up, you can see these are the informations we try to give you. So you always know which pawn it was, where's the location, what is the interacting actor and things like this. So this is really handy for more advanced stuff. But for our simple explosion example here, we are just going to use the active component and let's do a boolean here with a branch. And if it is active, I want to spawn an explosion. I think it's this one here. And if it is false, mm, nothing will happen here. One thing we need the location. So I'm just getting my actor location and plug this in there. And this is already everything we need. So the next thing would to actually connect them to the, to the button here. And as I said, we will talk in more detail about this in the drag component. But for now, let's open this up. And it's pretty familiar with earlier versions, but now you are able to, to trigger much more 
specific what component on what actor you want to trigger. So you can have multiple active components on, on your other actors now and you can specify here what is the component tag you actually want to trigger and here's the actor to trigger. So first of all, and this is quite simple, we add our new actor here. But now we don't know which component to talk to. So we need to give our component a tag and you can see all of them here has the tag already, but our new one of course does not have the tag. So we go to our active component here, component tags and add a new one. Let's name it something like active underscore bomb. And it's really important that you give it a descriptive name because it gets complex very fast. And this way you make sure to always know the connection between what is what is going on, what, what is really being triggered. So we have the component tag here, hit save and compile. We have added the actor here and here we can now define what tag to search for. So it's the active bomb. And if we hit play now, if it is off, nothing happens. But if it is on, the explosion is being spawned. So pretty simple example here. Let's do another one because I wanted to show and talk about the construction script. So let's create a new one and call it BP. BP light. Let's add a point light. And our component active. Hit compile and save. And what we want to do now is we want to connect them. So if it is active, the point light should be on. And if, it's, if it is not active, the point light should be off. Also the same approach here, we can use the active date changed again with our branch. We could do the interpolation we have in the other example, but for now let's keep it simple and just turn it on and off. So if it is active, I want to set the intensity to over 9000. And if it is not active, I'm just setting it to zero. So like this. And again, this partly works already, but, and also I'm sorry about these errors. This is a work in progress. Once we released it, um, you should, shouldn't see any errors here. Just need to add some text. So I'm, adding the, the light here. And again, we need to connect it to our drag component. So we need a tag for our active component. Active pump light. Save and compile and add it to our drag component. First add the actor, that's this one here, and then we add our new tag. So they should already talk with each other, but there's one issue I'm going to show you. So it's, it's on and it's off. So for, for playing, this is already working perfectly fine and for your users. But one thing you notice here in the editor, it is on right now. The reason for that is we haven't changed the, the intensity here. So this is set to 5000 right now. And even if I open up the active component, you can see the default value is off. So this here should be off, but we haven't connected it in the construction script. So we don't see the result here in the editor. This is not really that bad because if we if I just hit simulate, you can see 
we check it at begin play and really set all the values the way they should be. But if you want to see it in the Gion editor, we have added a function for you. It's in there. It is called in editor active state changed. And you will see this function in a lot of our other components too. So I'm just using this. And I can basically copy and paste this here. But in general, you should not copy and paste the same code over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one here. And I'm connecting it here. And I'm getting the value not there and not there, but directly from our component active. So I get my active variable get active i'm going to split it up and here i have my source info and my active value again i'm going to connect it and hit compile so now both of them are using the same event and even if i do changes to them the changes will be valid for both of them so let's try out if it is working Now you can use the toggle to turn it on and off. You can turn it off. And one thing you notice, if I turn it off, nothing happens in the viewport. The reason for that is you need to actually apply the settings. So if I hit apply settings, now it is off. If I turn it on, it is on. So if I set this to true here and I hit play now, it is on from the beginning, as you can see here. So just one minor thing to keep in mind. So as a recap, the active state is the most simple one in my my um, opinion. Because it's, it's just you, you get a boolean and it is either on and off. But you can already do a lot of great things with it. We have some examples of the active component. But basically you can do whatever you want after this branch here. So it's a really cool way to connect your components. Just make sure to use the right tags here. But this is a system you will need in all our components now. And it gives you really, really powerful um, possibilities what you can do and achieve. We also try to implement some more complex mechanics so you can get an idea of what is happening. And we can also quickly check out this light bulb here because it's using this approach a little different. Here you can see we have our, also our active state changed and we combine this here with the timeline. So again, we lerp between two values, 0 and 42. And this way we have this nice transition. And we also change the um, the material and the light intensity at the same time. And down here we have the same for the color component, but this will be part of another tutorial. So, thank you very much for watching my first tutorial about the new version. I'm really excited um, to show you all the possibilities and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye!